Everybody set? Uh, thanks for uh, taking the ride out. Uh, we're here to share a few facts as we have them in front of us. Uh, it's with very heavy hearts that we gather here tonight. I think we've proven again that freedom is not free uh, with this horrific crash that occurred here in the town of Menden. At about 6.32 p.m., we received multiple 911 calls for aircraft in distress. Uh, first responders arrived on scene at about the 1300 block of West Bloomfield Road shortly thereafter and did find an aircraft crash. Um, they went into life-saving mode, uh, trying to uh, rescue anybody that could be on that aircraft or in the area, including a grid search. And with New York State Police assets, a helicopter search of the area to see if there's any surviving victims. At this time, we believe three souls perished on board of the helicopter. The helicopter does belong to the U.S. National Guard, the New York State National Guard, and we believe the three souls on board were members of the National Guard. New York National Guard is en route, and we'll conduct a joint investigation with them and the FAA, uh, and actually we'll be, a, we'll be doing the preliminary investigation and turning the primary investigation over to the FAA and the National Guard. Uh, we are very grateful for the folks that responded to do the search and rescue to try and save our fallen. Uh, we are very grateful to the Monroe County Fire Bureau, the Honeyoy Falls Fire, Menden Fire, the New York State Police, the New York National Guard, and also the MCSO Victims Assistance Units that's trying to work with the families right now. As I said, we have the preliminary investigation of this Blackhawk that went down here in Menden, and I'd like to turn uh, this over to the Fire Chief of Menden. Pete Kessler, just to say a few words about what he experienced as his uh, firefighters arrived on scene. So at 6.32, we got the call for the uh, possible aircraft crash. Um, very shortly after the first assistant chief was on scene with a helicopter on fire in the field. 3617 command. Well, uh, um, we uh, received help or assistance from the airport fire department to extinguish the aircraft. Um, that's really all I have. Thanks, Chief. So this is a very tight-knit unit. Uh, there's a lot of family and a lot of people responding. Uh, they are responding to uh, the National Guard Center over at the uh, backside of the U our airport. Uh, the New York National Guard is en route. We've been in contact with them. And like I mentioned earlier, the FAA is all en route and also going to do a joint investigation with us. Um, one more time, I'd just like to reiterate, this is, this is a burden. This is a heavy, heavy burden upon all of us. Uh, these are our, our, our freedom providers. And again, uh, just showing again that the freedom is not free. We lost three great Americans today uh, in the service of our country. So I can answer a few questions, but obviously it's preliminary and we have uh, very few specific details, please. Sure. I was just wondering, from the distress call that you got, was there any indication of what was going on, mechanical failures? Yeah, according to the uh, 911 reports, and again, this is all preliminary, right, subject to change, uh, but there was calls of, of uh, sputtering uh, sounds of an engine, and that the aircraft was flying very low, uh, more low than normal. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, uh, reports of crash, uh, the sounding of a crash, and, and of course, uh, other reports that came in for the crash itself. Do you know if there was any calls to the control tower from the helicopter? No, I don't know that yet. That uh, uh, Obviously, we've been in contact with the, the control tower here in Rochester, but uh, we haven't done any backstepping yet. That was more looking forward and, and making sure we can identify the aircraft and who might have been on board so we can continue on with our search and rescue. Once we can continue, uh, once we identified how many souls were on board and we identified that we, we had those souls with us, uh, we were able to limit, if you will, the search and rescue portion of it. So there was rumors that there were actually five so again, we're waiting for the National Guard to do 100% confirmation. Uh, we have been up there with medical staff. We've been up there with first responders. Uh, and we're looking at right now, we're reporting three souls. The National Guard did put out a statement. So I'll rely on their statement for confirmation of who's actually on board and identification of, of, of our great soldiers uh, that were on there. But we'll let them do their job. And that may take a, a bit of time. Is it safe to assume that they were from Rochester headed somewhere? And I don't have the direct flight path of where they were going or where they're coming from, so I, I don't have that information. Again, we're going to rely on the state police, or excuse me, the New York National Guard to do that. And I seen they put out a statement right before I got here, so I don't know how much detail was in that statement, but they will sooner or later. Miss um, Young and, and Sergeant Baton will, will be marrying up with them and doing joint public releases on this. Uh, but we're going to rely on the National Guard to get that information out. Is the helicopter flying overhead for quite a bit of time? It, was that? Part of the search, were they, what were they doing? 
Absolutely. So uh, a couple things. It's a New York State police helicopter. It's an, it's an asset we use all the time here in Monroe County. Uh, and the idea there is, is, first of all, can we identify any victims? They're up there with a FLIR unit, uh, just confirming there's no other uh, victims around that, that may have ejected out of the aircraft. Uh, so they're doing quite an extensive search. That in conjunction with the ground searches, the firefighters and other first responders, including deputies, were out on ATVs, uh, out in different types of vehicles, just to confirm uh, if we have any other victims. And then uh, now, as we go into the investigative mode, we're trying to identify the actual path of the of the aircraft and what debris what the debris field looks like. And it just expanded again as we walked in here. They found more debris uh, further out. So we are going into the investigative mode now and secure as much of the scene as possible, and uh, working with our investigative partners and probably do a lot more of the investigation when the sun comes up tomorrow morning. Will the FAA get involved? Absolutely, yeah. They'll, be, they'll most likely be the primary witness with So the aircraft was fully involved when we got there. Um, I mean, was it, it a flame shooting up, or was it just smoke and? No, it it was on fire. So. And as far as the debris field, what what kind of radius were we looking at? I mean, how much damage does a helicopter crash in the field do? Yeah, so uh, it's it's very difficult to talk about this. You know, uh, it, it's a. It's a very limited initial crash site, if you will, but there is debris fields going over what I describe as a few city blocks right now, you know, hundreds of feet in each direction. Uh, that could be upon impact or that could have been prior to the crash. We don't know. That's not our expertise. We'll rely on the FAA to do that investigation. Uh, but we are literally, as we're talking right now, expanding that uh, because there's more debris being found uh, further scattered out. Did this happen in an open field or around in trees? Or? So a, a, a wide open uh, field, we consider a farmer's field. Thank God there are, there are houses uh, close to the area. No other houses or, or, or structures were struck as far as we can tell right now. Uh, there are no other threats to the, the public. Uh, like the chief said, the, uh, the fire apparatus was out there momentarily and then you know, limiting the, the spread of that fire. Uh, there was a barn in the area, uh, unoccupied. Uh, so it's an open farm field, if you will, where, where uh, the crash actually occurred. Chief, how do you go about attacking a situation like that as first responders, and then how long did it take to get the plane uh, So um, immediately we de determined it was an aircraft. We called for assistance from the airport. Um, they specialize in aircraft fires. They um, primarily use foam to extinguish it. Um, so our initial response, we set up. We turned it over to them. They were on scene very quickly, and we basically supplied them with water to extinguish the fire. So. How long did it take to put it out? Um, to, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a good number for you. Will you guys be out there on that one? Yeah, so uh, West Bloomfield Road, uh, the portion that's closed now will be closed throughout the remainder of the night, and probably into, um, if not mid morning, even later. Uh, we'll secure this, this scene as long as possible. Uh, we have already contacted school districts. So the fire chief actually school, contacted the school districts to let them know that the limited travel down that road. Uh, we've been in contact with all the neighbors down there. Uh, but yeah, this will be. This, we'll maintain this scene for hours, if not, you know, maybe a day or two. Just to uh, tell our viewers that if they get up in the morning, they will. Where will traffic be diverted? Yeah, so avoid the uh, 1300 block of West Bloomfield Road. Uh, uh, you know, basic in the area. Uh, it's between Cheese Factory Road and Bowden Hill. And so Bowden Hill is the southern part of it. Uh, and there'll be uh, traffic control points at each one of those intersections. So if I had anybody had to get down there, we could definitely assist them uh, if they had to get home or something like that. Uh, folks, just want to, again, uh, reiterate, the, you know, we had a Blackhawk in the middle of Mending go down uh, with three great Americans on it. So keep them in your minds and your prayers. Thanks.